What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode. So in today's Who to Sign For, we are going to take a look at Everton. Yes, Everton, the Premier League. What players to sign for an Everton career mode in FIFA 16? Now, first and foremost, what did the board want you to do with Everton this year if you're taking over from Martinez? They want you to qualify for the Champions League and also reach the semi-finals of a domestic cup. Is that achievable with this Everton side? Well, let's look at what they did last season uh, in the Premier League and other competitions as well. Last season, they finished in 11th place in the Premier League, finished in the FA Cup third round, the League Cup third round as well and also got to the Europa League round of 16. This season not in the Europa League or of course the Champions League either but of course will be still competing for those three trophies in the Premier League, the FA Cup and the League Cup as well. Now realistically can Everton win the league? Probably not with this set of players but can they qualify for the Champions League which is what the board wanted to do? I would say yes. It will be hard because there are some very strong teams in the Premier League as we know but I would say that with this uh, group of players it is definitely possible. But the transfer budget you've got to be able to know is your biggest downfall. You look at the squad right here, and as you can see, the average age of the squad is pretty decent. You do have some players that are in their 30s right now and are aging, coming towards the end of their careers. Uh, Stephen Pienaar and Tim Howard actually retire come the end of the season. But either way, there's some good young talent here. And I would say Everton are a pretty fun side to do a career mode with this, uh, career mode with this year. When you look at the likes of John Stones, uh, Romelu Lukaku, Ross Barkley, Della Feo as well. Some really good young talent for the Everton side. And then, of course, players like uh, Galloway as well, who develop quite nicely if they get a lot of game time. So, as you can see, this is the Everton side and the budget is the biggest letdown, only £18 million. For contracts, there are a few players that have their contracts off at the end of the year as well. Now, I know some Everton fans will be looking at that list and saying, surely you are giving new deals to uh, Hibbert and uh, Osman as well as their club legends. Uh, both of them have been at their clubs enti their entire lives, uh, other than Osman having a couple of loan spells. Um, personally speaking, I would say that you shouldn't offer any of those guys a contract. Possibly Stanek, the uh, goalkeeper, who does grow to a 77, I do believe, but uh, that's just if you want to, really. Goalkeepers don't peak until their later years, usually, and uh, he may not be worth it overall. But uh, either way, for Everton, as you can see right here, bringing in new players, to the club it's something which with 18 million pounds is going to be a little bit of a challenge now I know that the squad as you saw right there is pretty decent but you do want to try and improve it in some ways and I would personally say that the best way of improving the Everton side is by looking to bring in some strength in depth so not looking at improving the first team uh, massively by bringing in one superstar that you hope will lead your club into the Champions League but I would look at the strength in depth because the squad is actually pretty decent it's not bad at all but the problem with Everton is that they've got a lot of mediocre players here. Now, there are some good young, talented players, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of players in this Everton squad who are in their mid to late 20s and possibly early 30s as well, who don't really have much potential, of course, being that age and are really bog standard and average in terms of their overall ability and probably won't go, won't, go, won't do too much for you if you're trying to develop this Everton side into a really good one in the Premier League and hopefully in Europe for many years to come. So the likes of Gibson, the likes of Oviedo, I'll try and shift them on and bring in uh, replacements for them that are going to be on the bench and also in the resis as well, but have potential to get really good in the future. Uh, now, you saw the three players I was originally looking in for there. Charlie Austin, Callum Chambers, and Jesse Rodriguez. Now, I included Austin just because I would say that's a sort of a realistic target, if you will. Not that these signings are designed to be realistic, but uh, he's 77 overall. He's your 15-plus goal a year striker, really. And from the bench, that's a pretty good option. And as his contract's up at the end of the year, you might be able to get him on a cheap deal. But sadly, QPR and this save weren't willing to play ball. But if you want, you can sign him on a pre-contract in January for free. But uh, still, as for Jesse Rodriguez and Callum, Chambers. Now, these two players will be fantastic. Chambers, as you can see, was the first signing I managed to make uh, for £2.5 million. That's an absolute bargain. It may under, it may be four hundred grand over his valuation initially, but he's only 20 years old, Callum Chambers, and he's 72 overall, has potential to 82, I think it is. He's got some really nice, well-rounded stats, and for some reason as well, he doesn't have centre-back listed in his positions, but uh, I'm pretty sure he can definitely play there, as we know. Uh, Right-back and centre-back, really, I would say Chambers can play. A good replacement for Tony Hibbert, if you will, who, again, I wouldn't offer a new contract to, in 
unless you really want to keep the club legend here, as uh, I just let him retire personally. But either way, Chambers, I think, would be a great sign of 2.5 million pounds. What you're doing here is you're adding strength in depth, you're reducing the age of the squad, and you're also buying players for the future as well. Now, as for Hesse Rodriguez, this is one player who I would say you have to look into signing if you are doing an Everton career mode. You can get him for around his valuation, which is an absolute steal. We managed to negotiate a deal, which is his valuation, at 8.5 million pounds. He is an absolute bargain in this year's career mode. He starts off with 78 overall. He has potential to 85. And in most career saves, he grows right from the get-go and begins developing right from the beginning. He is a fantastic player to play off the bench right from the beginning. And in years to come, at just 22 years old, knowing he can hit 85 and with game time, with good form and a training feature as well, he can get into the high 80s. This guy is an absolute steal at around eight and a half million pounds. If you're doing an Everton career mode, this is your backup winger who can also play up top as well. Four-star weak foot, four-star skills. I would say that for a club with a limited budget like Everton have, only £80 million, that is the biggest bargain signing you can make in this year's career. Try and get Hesse Rodriguez for around his valuation. He is an absolute bargain in this year's game. Uh, also, Isaac's success of uh, Granada. You can get him for a pretty cheap deal. Again, around his valuation like Rodriguez. He's only 70 overall and 19 years old. You'd probably wonder why we'd do that. But I would say he's a third-choice striker who's a pretty decent player. And I would say he's worth bringing in uh, as a player who can hit 82 potential. He's got 82 potential, so he could be pretty good in the future. He's only a third-choice striker. Uh, he's going to be on relatively low wages. I would say as a backup option, he's worth pursuing. But uh, also a list of these strikers as well. Because uh, what I would recommend doing as well with uh, Everton is looking at the striker role and saying, even though Romelu Lukaku is going to be your number nine for many years to come, a very, very awesome uh, natural finisher, Lukaku, uh, in good form in real life right now. Very good striker rating very highly. Uh, of course, a uh, former Chelsea and Anderlecht player as well, and also spent a loan spell at West Brom, and also Everton as well before joining on a permanent deal. Uh, even though he'll be your main striker, I'd still recommend getting a backup striker and selling on Aruna Kone, or, or even, as we're seeing right here, putting in bids for loads of strikers here, trying to swap out Kone and uh, put in a couple million pounds for one of these strikers here. Now, a lot of the clubs won't be willing to pay ball because Kone is not exactly a striker who many clubs will want. He's 31 uh, years old. He turns 32 during in the season and the strikers we're looking at here are like 10 years younger or several years younger anyway so a lot of the clubs may not be willing to take Kone and uh, just a couple million pounds for one of their good young talented strikers but as you can see Bordeaux and uh, Locomotive Moscow accepted bids there for Roland and also can't pronounce the guy's name I think it's Niasse but uh, either way I would say that uh, if you can try and get Kone uh, swap Kone out I should say uh, for one of those strikers plus a couple million pounds that would be a good deal because Kone starts off at 77 overall and he's not a bad striker to having your side as a backup player, but there's a chance he'll decrease in the first season. So if I were you, I'd look at getting a younger backup striker in for Romelu Lukaku, someone who can play off the bench, bang in a couple of goals per season, and if Lukaku's injured, be the number one striker uh, whilst he's out or uh, suspended, for example. I would say that uh, one of these strikers here, Niasse or Roland, the two we were pursuing, would be really good options. They're both 77 overall, and as you can see, they both accept contracts uh, after we give them deals. So uh, Roland for £3 million pounds plus Kony was the player we set on. I could have gotten the assay, but uh, Roland, 77 overall, 82 potential. It's not amazing, don't get me wrong. That's a growth rating of five, not very much. But as a backup striker, you know, Lukaku's going to be your number one striker for, for, for many years to come. You know that. This guy's a backup. This guy's a squad player, really. And as a backup, as a safety net, off the bench, he's not really a bad option. So I recommend be, uh, putting him in uh, and swapping out Arona Kone. Just because Kone may decrease in the first season, his valuation will drop. He's not worth his 50 grand a week contract, in my opinion. I'd swap him out and look at bringing in a younger striker who has potential to get into the 80s. Uh, now, for one more signing, uh, I would recommend trying to get hold of Kramer. Now, Kramer is a player that I'm a huge fan of, so I might be a little bit biased when uh, recommending this guy for Everton. But Kramer is 24 years old. He starts off at 79 overall. The holding midfielder has the potential to 84 in the game, which is a growth rating of 5. Pretty solid. You will have to give him a decent contract, and his valuation is £8.5 million. Pounds. You'll probably have to spend a little bit over the valuation. We got a deal of a uh, 10 million pounds straight accepted from the beginning so you might get it for the valuation I probably should have done that first and foremost but either way around 8.5 to 10 million pounds I'd say should be enough to try and get hold of Kramer now you may have to give him a wage increase which is a bit of a shame but I really do rate this guy and again I, I know I'm probably a little bit biased here but I really do rate the guy I think he's a very good defensive midfielder you'll see his stats when, we, when he comes in here he does look really really solid and what you've got to remember is that Gareth Barry is a 79 overall defensive midfielder in your team right now but he's 34 years old and he's 10 years older and set to decrease in the first 
first season. Personally speaking, actually trying to sell Gareth Barry if you get in the first season, bring in Kramer as a younger replacement. I love his stats. I love his work rates. I love his energy. I love his weak foot and skill moves being balanced at three star each. He's six foot three as well. And I would say he's a really, really good option to play in the holding midfield role as a long-term replacement for Gareth Barry. So he's a player, again, who you don't necessarily need because he's the same overall as Gareth Barry. But I would say as a long-term replacement for him, he's a pretty decent option. But those are players I would bring in for an Everton career mode. So you spend around 25 million pounds in bringing all those players in. And I know what some of Everton fans are going to be saying, why did you not replace Tim Howard? Because, of course, he is retiring in the uh, in the game in the first season. And I know in real life he's having a bit of a shocker. I can admit that. He's not playing too well uh, this season in real life, or hasn't been so far. As I say, this will probably save two penalties tonight in a game against City. But uh, either way, uh, Tim Howard, not having the best season in real life. But in the first season, Howard, uh, despite retiring, does actually start growing ratings. You can see it already in the first squad report after the window. He has already grown a rating. So Howard, I'll just keep him here personally and then look at uh, bringing a replacement goalkeeper next season. Use Howard this year, who is quite good in the game, and then uh, next season look at replacing him once he has officially retired. But uh, those are players I would bring in for an Everton career mode. Again, £25 million spent. You look at the squad right here, it has improved a little bit. Not massively so, I can admit that. But you've got some good young talent here already. Those players add to that talent, and it looks like a better squad in terms of the youngsters coming through as you've got a bit more talent here with Everton. So we simulate to the end of the season. Could we get Everton in the Champions League? That was the main question. And as you can see, we did. And how about this? We finished in second place. Although I will say this in defence, it is only three points clear of fifth place Liverpool. So I will be honest, I felt like a little bit of a god when the simulation ended and I found out we finished in second place. But when you consider the fact we're only six points clear of Chelsea in seventh, it's not actually as amazing as it sounds. But either way, I'm still pretty sure the Everton fans would take it. Second place would put them in the Champions League next season, which is, of course, what the board wanted. They reached the FA Cup semi-finals as well. So both aims have uh, been met for League and Cup. Uh, they were knocked out by United on penalties. But as you can see, the Everton score coming at the end of the season regardless to finish in second place and uh, to also uh, finish in the FA Cup semi-finals as well. You'll see the squad right here. You know, I mentioned at the start of the episode, it is a good squad. You know, this is a good, good squad. There are some players who, again, you will want to shift on the likes of Naismith and Gibson and uh, possibly, again, McGeady as well, uh, depending on how you look at him. You know, these are the sort of the average players who you don't really have many high hopes for. They're not going to grow in the first season. They'll probably start decreasing, not before long. These are the type of players you should look into replacing and bringing in those better squad players to come in as well. And you can look at the players we brought in this season as well. Uh, Kramer started growing, as did uh, Hesse Rodriguez. He grew three rate, uh, ratings. Uh, I don't believe Roland or Success grew, but the others did at least grow one rating. The players coming in, I would say, are definitely going to benefit your Everton side for years to come. And again, this guy, I would say, is the biggest steal of the lot for £8.5 million. Pounds. Rodriguez is a signing who I do believe you just have to make if you are doing an Everton career mode. So a pretty fun team to manage Everton, to be honest. Those aims are quite difficult, qualifying for the Champions League and also reaching the FA Cup semi-finals. But I've shown you right there, they are definitely achievable with some smart transfer business and a good foundation to begin with this Everton squad. It's a really decent team. And of course, some good young talent does make it a very desirable career mode this year. And I would say I had a lot of fun doing this one too. This is a really fun who to sign for. Had a lot of fun trying to pick out some good signings. And I think I did a good job as well. But uh, thank you for watching this episode of Who to Sign For, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below how you would manage Everton in the first season. Also as well, tell me in the comment section down below who you want me to manage in my next Who to Sign For series uh, for YouTube. But thank you for watching the video. Please do leave a like if you have enjoyed today's episode of Who to Sign For. And I'll see you for my next Who to Sign For very soon.